Welcome, and thank you, Silken. Uh, it's, uh, great to have uh, everyone with here now. I'm just going to do a quick time bringing up the video on my. Oh, make sure all the volume's down. Oh, there we go. And here we are. Okay. Um, so welcome to everyone as you uh, you join us for this uh, this time of worship. Um, today is uh, the fourth Sunday in Lent, and uh, I welcome everyone, of course. Um, there's also a few other things that are going on today, of course. We will have communion um, in a separate live stream following our time of worship today, so I hope everyone is prepared with their own elements to uh, join us for that. Um, it is also, of course, the, uh, the one-year anniversary uh, Sunday of... Uh, the declaration of the pandemic and so we'll certainly be addressing that as part of our worship today and uh it's also march the 14th or 3 14 um on a new numerical calendar which uh many people also refer to as pi day because of 3.14 um a firm uh, a firm united and other churches within the united church of canada make use of 314 as uh, calling it Pi Day as a time to also make that declaration that we are an open and welcoming and inviting church um, using the term Pi for public, intentional, and explicit. So that, uh, and under other circumstances and being a little more prepared, perhaps uh, Ellie and I would have some Pi here to symbolize that, but that didn't happen today or this week. But we do certainly want to take an opportunity to be public, intentional, and explicit in letting people know that we, as a congregation, are absolutely welcoming and inviting of people of all orientations and genders. So please know that you are welcome and you are celebrated and honored as who you are. Um, as we prepare for worship, let us take time to uh, share, um, offer our uh, stories, things that are going on in our lives that we wish to share and also to make any announcements. And I'll have a few of my own after this, but let's take time for a ministry of music from Gail as we to share. Thank you, Gail. So I want to make sure I make this announcement before I forget. Um, so we are, uh, Easter is coming up much quicker than I could ever anticipate. It, that seems to happen every year, unfortunately. Um, one of the things that we are uh, at the, on the worship committee are trying to do is 
establish, uh, has come up with, we've got another project in mind uh, around photos. We are looking to uh, put together a photo collage of members of the congregation holding signs. Two, there's two different signs. Uh, one will say, Christ is risen, and the other will say, Christ is risen indeed. And we want to get pictures of, of as many members of the congregation as we can holding one or the other of those signs. And so uh, we're hoping that you will cooperate and uh, either take your own picture or allow someone else to take a picture of you holding a sign that says either Christ is risen or Christ is risen indeed. To facilitate that, Luis Farrar is in the process of making a couple of sets of those signs, um, one or two, so that they can be um, distributed or shared throughout the, the people in the congregation and another one that uh, she and Don can take and visit people to make sure pictures are taken. So I guess at some point, either Louise will be in contact with you or you can be in contact with Louise about those signs and we can go about getting those pictures. We wanna have those before Palm Sunday so that we have some time to actually put them together and edit them into a proper video that we can share. Can I ask, we have a number of people who are adherents, they're not living in Dunville. Yes. Can they make their own signs, say if they live in BC or Kenora. Iraq or Kenora, <laughs> <laughs> or Sioux Lookout, um, so that it, it might be nice to actually put a face to some of the people whose names we do see every week that are joining us online. I don't see why not. If they're prepared to email them to me, that would be awesome. Okay, I don't think Louise and Dawn really want that far a road trip at this time, but well, they might. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So, anyways, if you could, uh, and feel free to email me either with questions or with your picture at minister at gracedunville.ca. So, thank you for that. Um, and of course, today is. The anniversary of when we announced that uh, in-person worship was going to be closed for two weeks we said at that time oh how naive we were <laughs> um, so it's uh we want to acknowledge that that it has been a actually that first sunday we didn't have you know, on, online worship we just didn't have worship um it was a Last, not quite a last minute, but uh, certainly the day, just the day before into the evening that we finally made that I think we made the decision that we weren't going to have worship that Sunday. Um, the following Sunday, Gail and I uh, gathered in the parlor at uh, Grace and uh, live streamed worship. I think Keith was along to uh, to make sure that the uh, the camera stayed pointed at me, uh, much appreciated for that, Keith. Um, in any case, here we are a year later. And uh, hopefully, it will not be another. It will only. It won't be much longer until we can gather again in, in worship in one place. In with that in mind, I have a prayer that uh, was offered by uh, the moderator of the United Church, um, the Reverend, uh, the Right Reverend Richard Bott, and I wanted to share that at this time. Holy One, it's been a year, a year since the pandemic hit this part of the world and we realized that for the safety of each other and all of our neighbors, we needed to be a congregation that wouldn't congregate. Well, not in person at least. We found other ways. Old technologies like paper mail, and telephone trees, and new technologies like Zoom or Facebook Live, and pastoral care by video. We found ways to, of being together with each other and with you. It's not the same, and there are parts of it that we're missing. But we found ways to live the ministry you have given us, to be Jesus' disciples, to share your love with each other and with the whole world. We remember those who have died from the virus. We remember those who are ill. 
We remember the healthcare workers, the researchers, the grocery clerks, the delivery drivers, those in other service industries, all who must work for the care of the world in their own way. We remember all those who are grieving, all those who are afraid, all those who wait, and we pray. So on this anniversary, we ask that you would help us to recognize each other and to know that in all of this, you have been, are, and always will be with every part of your creation. Give us strength to keep on. Give us grace in our frustrations. Give us hope for tomorrow. Give us life and life abundant that we might be people who live in the world, physically distanced, but socially together, faces masked, but hearts open, hands washed, but ready to get to the work you have, you have for us. We pray in Jesus' name, carried by the wings of the Holy Spirit and meshed in the Creator's love, we pray. Amen. And so let us begin this time of worship and let us light our candle signifying Christ with us and let us join in singing, Lord, prepare me to be a sanctuary. Just want to make note here that Maureen Jones has mentioned Norma Eady and she believes that she's 104. As of March the 20th is my understanding. Oh, okay. So, going to be. Going to be. But yes, my guess would be... In uh, preparation of that, um, if anyone can get, if, if Norma's not able to be with us on Facebook Live or on video, may she, someone par share with her this week. Happy birthday, Norma. And so let us light our candle and let us join in song. to join with me in our call to worship. Ellie, are you ready with it? There's a response. Oh, I'm sorry. <laughs> I lost my place. Call. You ready? Yeah. Okay. Give thanks to God. For God is good all the time. And God's steadfast love endures forever. For we cried out to God in our troubles, and God saved us from our distress. The word came to heal and deliver us from destruction. Let all of humankind offer thanksgiving and sing of God's deeds through worship and song. Amen. Let us pray. Healing God, you are rich in mercy and generous in love. Grace us with signs of your presence so that our worship may glorify you and lift up the Christ who calls us towards new life. Amen. Amen. Now let us join in our opening hymn, Take My Life. Number 506 in Voices United. Consecrated. 
struggling with those higher notes today. They're not quite coming out. More of a croak. I apologize for anyone that's having to endure that. Let us, uh, let us take time for a prayer of confession. As we bring before God our struggles, our acknowledgement that we are far from perfect, and yet acknowledge, uh, naming the assurance that God's love endures. Let us pray. God of Moses, we can relate to the Israelites in the desert. We know that it is easier to condemn and criticize than to redeem and reflect. Long for what we had than to imagine what could be. We know how simple it is to get stuck in places of anger and condemnation. When we cry out against you as the people cried out to Moses, please be patient with us and grant us the courage to choose gratitude and hope whenever possible. Amen. Amen. Through Jesus, we do not find condemnation. Through Jesus, we find salvation. As sure as the sun rises, know that by grace and through grace, you have been redeemed. Amen. Amen. Now we come to our ministry of music. This morning coming from Reverend Brian Howell. And so just give me a moment to bring that up. And uh, enjoy. Thank you, Brian. Good morning. I'm going to share with you uh, an old hymn, uh, Precious Lord, Take My Hand, uh, written by Tommy Dorsey. And uh, he wrote it when he was going through a, a particularly hard time in his life and it's uh, kind of written as a cry or a plea to God to walk with him, to, to lift him up, to uh, support him, to take his hand and uh, be with him through this difficult time. And We all in our lives have struggles and hard times and so I think we can all relate to this hymn and, and uh, the trust we have that God does love us through all things at all times.
take my hand. Precious Lord, lead me home. Take my hand. Precious Lord, lead me home. Thank you, Brian. And, uh, Hopefully, I was hitting a lot of mutes for desktop audios, but I think I've got the microphone on, so hopefully I, you can hear me, and if that's not, you'll certainly let me know. Um, I had placed uh, Numbers 21 as uh, one of the scripture readings, but I change that up at the last minute. And so I am reading from Psalm 107, parts of it. Some wandered in desert wastes, finding no way to an uninhabited town. Hungry and thirsty, their soul fainted within them. Then they cried to the Lord in their trouble, and he delivered them from their distress. He led them by a straight way until they reached an inhabited town. Some were sick through their sinful ways and, became, and because of their iniquities endured affliction. They loathed any kind of food and they drew near to the gates of death. Then they cried to the Lord in their trouble and he saved them from their distress. He sent them out his word and healed them and delivered them from this destruction. Let them thank the Lord for his steadfast love, for his wonderful works to humankind, and let them offer thanksgiving sacrifices and tell of his deeds with songs of joy. And I also read from the Gospel of John, chapter 3, verses 14 to 21. And just as Moses lifted up the serpent in the wilderness, so must the Son of Man be lifted up, that whoever believes in him may have eternal life. For God so loved the world that he gave his only Son, so that everyone who believes in him may not perish, but may have eternal life. Indeed, God did not send the Son into the world to condemn the world, but in order that the world might be saved through him. Those who believe in him are not condemned, but those who do not believe are condemned already, because they have not believed in the name of the only Son of God. And this is the judgment that, that the light has come into the world, and people, and, and people love darkness rather than light because their deeds were evil. For all who do evil hate the light and do not come to the light, so that their deeds may not be exposed. But those who do not but those who do what is true come to the light, so that it may be clearly seen that their deeds have been done in God. May we hear what the Spirit is saying to the churches. I've got another video. This is uh, May Lynn and Emerson. Hi everybody, today Emerson and I are doing a reading called With a Song, and it's based on Psalm 107. Child sat poking at dinner but not eating. Child had been fidgeting and clearly uncomfortable since coming home from school. Is everything okay? asked adult. Child shrugged silently. Adult thought for a moment and then asked, can you tell me how you feel? I don't know. Kind of sad, I guess. Hmm. Adult nodded and asked, Did something happen to make you feel this way? Child looked back down at the uneaten food and whispered, I had a fight with friend at school. Adult sighed. Fights with friends are hard. Feelings can be hurt. Were there some mean words said in the fight? Asked adult. Child shrugged again, but didn't look up. Maybe. Child still did not eat and was clearly upset. So adult asked, do you remember what you told me about what you learned in Sunday school? 
What did you read? Child was surprised by the change of topic. We were reading a song, said child. Adult nodded. Right, and what did the song say? Child thought for a minute and then said, Well, people were thanking God. And what else? asked adult. Someone was sick, so sick that they almost died. Yes, said adult. They were hurt. They told God they were hurt. And what happened? They were healed, said child. Adult nodded. We don't know what happened to that person. We don't know why they were sick or whether they were hurt in their mind, in their body, or in their heart. But you know what? It doesn't matter. No matter what kind of hurt there is, God loves you and wants to help you get better. Can you remember how that reading ended? What's the song? Adult nodded and opened the Bible and read. Then they cried to God in their trouble, and God saved them from their distress. Let them give thanks for God's never-ending love and tell of God's deeds with songs of joy. Adult paused for a moment and said, No matter what, God loves you and wants you to be happy and healthy. When you feel bad or when you are hurt, God is with you. So you can always tell God what has happened and know that God loves you no matter what. No matter what. Adult and child to talk. Eventually, they talked about the fight with friend at school. They both felt God with them as they talked. They made a plan for child to talk with friend. Afterward, adult and child gave thanks for God's healing love. Thank you for joining us for that story this morning. Thank you. That's great. With Malin and to Emerson for that reading. Much appreciated. What does it mean that God loves us? We make this proclamation on a regular basis. God loves us. God never gives up on us. We point to Jesus dying on a cross as the ultimate example of that love. But what do we do with that? What does it mean? These are not easy questions to answer, I know. This is something we can spend a great deal of time reflecting on, praying about, and ideally engaging in intense conversation with others about. For God so loved the world. There's a story that got a little bit of play in the last few weeks or so on social media platforms. I will not go into names in recounting bits of it here. I also do not want to get into all of the details. It's a story that can make a great many people angry. But here it goes. The broad strokes. A preacher in the southern United States, just in the last few weeks, got into some hot water after one of his sermons was recorded and shared. Re shared. It went viral. During this sermon, he started offering marriage advice to his congregation. In particular, he discussed how wives should be subservient to their husbands and aim to be trophy wives in the model of the wife of the former president of the United States. That they should put a premium on their appearance and watch their weight. Otherwise, who can blame their husbands if their eyes wander? There's more. I won't go there. It's unbelievable stuff. I rarely take time to critique other clergy, but it is incredibly vexing that these stories get prominence, that this is what is discussed amongst people who rarely if ever participate in worship is heartbreaking, if you ask me. The ways that kind of sermon or reflection is wrong from my perspective are just about too numerous to count here. You see, in my experience and my training, offering advice or direction on marriage or the roles of people in a marriage is pretty much unthinkable as part of a sermon, if not at all. That is not what this time is for. 
Marriage counselor is not one of my professional qualifications. Never mind the view of men and women and their relationships to one another and my profound disagreements with the premise behind these assertions. What I try to consider in my sermons is the gospel message or good news of God's unending and unconditional love. Perhaps putting some context on scripture and untangling passages of scripture that are often challenging. And finally, asking the question, how are we called to respond to God's love? What does God desire for us as God's beloved creation? Assertion of power and demanding subservient from others just doesn't fit that model. Which brings me back to what does God's love look like? God so loved the world that he gave his only son. Jesus comes to reveal God's love. Our response was the cross. Humans decided to nail Jesus to a cross for breaking the rules. Jesus refused to be silent in proclaiming a world of justice and love. He insists on naming himself the Son of God. And that puts him on a path that ends in crucifixion. God's love is vulnerable and sacrificial. And that love cannot be killed. The story does not end on the cross. It ends with an empty tomb as Christ is resurrected. No matter how we may try to resist God's love, no matter how we may decide we are not worthy of God's love, no matter how we twist the idea of that love and weaponize scripture to hold power over others, God's love, God's message of love and mercy and peace cannot be buried. Throughout the last several weeks, we have reflected on a variety of covenants that God enters into with creation. The rainbow, signifying God will no longer flood the earth or destroy it. God enters a covenant with Abraham and Sarah to make them the parents of many nations, as numerous as the stars. No matter how flawed this couple may be, no matter how dysfunctional their family might be, this covenant will endure over de generations. As the Israelites wander in the desert, losing their way both literally and figuratively, struggling to find their way to a just and peaceful community, God offers them direction and boundaries. God calls us to value life, ours and our neighbors, and also that of our community. God promises to keep walking with us. No matter how much we lose our way and no matter how much we resist God's love and the message of God's love, God persists. God keeps coming to us with new agreements, new calls for a loving and committed relationship. God finds new ways to express that love and asks us to share that love in how we treat one another. In Jesus, we see that love expressed as uncompromising and, and as vulnerable. It is not a love that is projected through power as we know it. It is not a love grounded in might makes right or violence or the threat of violence, or the fear of violence. It can be difficult to accept this kind of love. The implications are challenging. What does it mean to be loved like this? How are we to respond? I am convinced God desires life and peace, true peace for us. 
God desires that we know we are all loved intensely by our Creator. But it can be a love that is frightening to emulate. If we know, truly know, that we are loved in such a way by God, and truly appreciate that each and every one we meet is loved in the same way, how does that, or how should that, influence how we treat those neighbors and strangers? What do we wish for one another if we assume that perspective? It is not a love based on subservience. There is a difference between subservience and vulnerability. To be vulnerable means you can be hurt. Your defenses are down. Trust is critical. To be subservient, on the other hand, means you are dominated. You are part of a relationship where all the power rests in another. Is that an example of love? Not as I understand it. While Jesus serves us, he is not dominated. While Jesus is vulnerable and suffers, he refuses to bend in his declaration of love. What do we do with that information? How do we respond to that type of love? Are we willing to let ourselves be vulnerable, to love in such a way that we are open for the hurt that so often comes? Are we willing to put ourselves out there to risk so much in the name of love? Christ was, God is. May we be open to the Spirit moving us to love as we have been loved. Thanks be to God. Amen. Where did I put my order of service? There. Let us take time for reflection as we listen to In You There Is a Refuge and then join in singing. After number 84 and more voices.
many pages in two different not set in proper order. On Thursday during my noon hour prayer I made use of resources from the Anglican Church of Canada recognizing the anniversary of the, of the naming of the pandemic. I want to share the prayers of the people from that one more time. I think it's appropriate for this day. And there is a response that comes with this. And so let us join our voices with the one who is gentle and humble, lifting our hearts to God, praying, hear us as we pray, God of grace and mercy. So that is the response that will come at different times throughout this prayer. Hear us as we pray, God of grace and mercy. For the sick and suffering, particularly those afflicted by the COVID-19 virus, that God will bring them to wholeness and restore them to those who love them. Let us lift our hearts to God. Hear us as we pray, God, God of, of grace, grace and, and mercy. mercy. For all who care for patients and their loved ones, that God will give them strength for their service and wisdom to seek help when they are in need. Let us lift our hearts to God. Hear us as we pray, God, God of, of grace, grace and mercy. mercy. For the fragile elderly, who's those struggling with fear, people vulnerable in health, and all enduring isolation in this time of pandemic, that we may know the warm embrace of God's compassion, let us lift our hearts to God. Hear us as, as we, we pray. pray. God of grace and mercy. For all those who have died and for mourners who must grieve their loss apart from loved ones, that the time will come when we may gather once again to sing Alleluia over the graves of our beloved. Let us lift our hearts to God. Hear us as we pray, God of grace and mercy. For whom or what else? Do we pray this day? Let us lift our hearts to God. Hear us, us as, as we, we pray, pray. God, God of grace and mercy. God of grace and compassion, you shoulder our burdens and ease our heavy hearts. As we mark the first anniversary of the declaration of the pandemic by the World Health Organization, be comfort for those who grieve, strength for those who falter, and eternal rest for those who have died. Buttress our hearts and wills, spark our imaginations, and kindle hope in our depths that we may trust, follow, and love you for our well-being and for the sake of the world. This we ask in the name of Jesus Christ, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. Amen. 
And now let us join in our closing hymn, Love Divine, All Loves Excelling. Number 333 on Voices United. you and again invite you to stay close to your computers and uh, on Facebook to know that uh, we will be coming back a few minutes afterwards for a time of communion. Thank you again for being with us for this time of worship and may you go forth with blessing. And with that I offer this blessing before we sing May God's Sheltering Wings. When doubt, fear, and desperation hit you in the wilderness, don't forget to look around. God's love will be visible somewhere. We have only to look for it. May the God, grace of God, the love of Jesus, and the abiding friendship of the Holy Spirit be with us all, now, and always. Amen. Amen. Let us sing.
time of worship and uh, invite you to join us again in let's say five minutes uh, for our time of communion so my clock right now says 1126 so at 1131 I'll call you back for a time of communion God bless <laughs>